All right, so now it's time to compile and train our model. Now, the first thing that we have to do is just define the model, give it an optimizer, give it a loss function, and then I think we have to define uh, the metrics as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say model equals, in this case, uh, or sorry, not model equals, model.compile, if I spell compile correctly. And then here we're gonna say uh, optimizer, we're going to use the Atom Optimizer again. I'm not really going to talk about what these are that much. If you're interested in the optimizer, just look them up. And then for the loss function, where you're going to use the binary underscore cross entropy. Now, what this one essentially is, is well, binary means like two options, right? And in our case, we want to have two options for the output neuron, which is zero or one. So what's actually happening here is we have the sigmoid function, which means our number is going to be between zero and one. But what the loss function will do is pretty well calculate the difference between, for example, say our output neuron is like 0 0.2 and the actual answer was zero. Well, it will give us a certain function that can calculate the loss. So how much of a difference 0 0.2 is from zero. Um, and that's kind of how that works. Again, I'm not going to talk about them too much. And they're not like, I mean, they are important, but not to really like memorize per se, like you kind of just mess with different ones. But in this case, binary cross entropy works well because we have two possible values, zero or one. So rather than using the other one that we used before, which I don't even remember what it was called, something cross entropy, we're using binary cross entropy. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna split our training data into two sets. And the first set of our training data is gonna be called validation data or really, I guess you can think of it as a second, the order doesn't really matter. But what we're gonna do is just get some validation data. And what validation data is, is essentially we can check how well our model is performing based on the tunes and tweaks we're doing on the training data on new data. Now, the reason we do that is so that we can get a more accurate sense of how well our model is, because we're gonna be testing new data to get the accuracy each time, rather than testing it on data that we've already seen before, which again means that the model can't simply just memorize each review and give us either a zero or one for that. It has to actually have some degree of, I don't know, like thinking or operation so that it can work on new data. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say X underscore val equals, and all we're gonna do is just grab the train data. Uh, and we're just gonna cut it to a uh, thousand or 10,000 entries. So there's actually 25,000 entries or I guess reviews in our training data. So we're just going to take 10,000 of it and say we're going to use that as validation data. Now, in terms of the size of validation data, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, this is what uh, TensorFlow is using. So I'm just kind of going with that. But again, mess with these numbers and see what happens to your model. Everything with our neural networks and machine learning really is going to come down to very fine what's known as hyper parameters or like hyper tuning. Uh, which means just changing individual parameters each time until we get a model that is, well, just better and more accurate. So we're going to say that x val equals that, but then we're also going to have to modify our x train data uh, to be train underscore data. And in this case, we're just going to do the other way around. So 10,000 colon. Now I'll just copy this and we're just going to replace this again with instead of test, uh, actually, oh, we have to do this with labels. Sorry, what am I thinking? So we're just going to train change this to be labels. And then instead of X val, it's just going to be Y value and then Y train. Um, so yeah, we're not touching the test data because we're going to use all that test data to test our model. And then we're just going to use the, uh, the training stuff or the validation data to validate the model. All right. So now that we've done that, it is actually time to fit the model. So I'm just going to say uh, like fit <laughs> model. And you'll see why I'd name this something different in a second. It's going to be equal to model.fit. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say X underscore train, Y underscore train. We're going to say epochs uh, is equal to, I think that's how you spell it, 40. And again, you can mess with this number and see what we get based on that. And we're going to say batch underscore size equals 512, which I'll talk about in a second. And then finally, we're going to say validation underscore data equals. And in here, we're going to say uh, X underscore val, Y underscore val. And I think that's it. Let me just check here quickly. Oh, one last thing that I forgot to do. We're going to say verbose equals one. Verbose equals one. Now, I'm not going to lie. I honestly don't know what verbose is. I probably should have looked it up before the video, but I have no idea what that is. So if someone knows, please let me know. But the batch size is essentially how many, what do you call it, um, movie reviews we're going to do each time or how many we're going to load in at once. Because this thing is, it's kind of 
I mean, we're loading all of our reviews into memory, but in some cases we won't be able to do that and we won't be able to like feed the model all of our reviews on each single cycle. So we just set up a batch size uh, that's going to define essentially how many at once we're going to give. And I know I'm kind of horribly explaining what a batch size is, um, but we'll get into more on batch sizes and how we can kind of do like buffering through our data and like going taking some from a text file and reading into memory in later videos when we have like hundreds of gigabytes of data that we're going to be working with. Okay, so finally we're going to say results equals and in this case I believe it is model dot evaluate and then we're going to evaluate this obviously on our test data. So we're going to give it test data and test labels. So test underscore data test underscore labels like that. And then finally, what I'm going to do is just actually print out the results so we can see what our accuracy is. So say print results um, and then get that value. So let me run this quickly. Neural networks, text classification. Let's go CMD and then Python text uh, or that's not even the one we're using. We're using tutorial too. sorry. And let's see what we get with this. This will take a second to run through the epoch. So I'll fast forward through that. So you guys don't have to wait. All right. So we just finished doing the epochs now and essentially our accuracy was 87%. Uh, and this first number I believe is the loss, which is 0.33. And then you can see that actually um, here we get the accuracy values and notice that the accuracy from our last epoch was actually greater than the accuracy on the test data which again shows you that sometimes, you know, when you test it on new data, you're going to be getting a less accurate model. Or in some cases, you might even get a more accurate model. It really just, you can't strictly go based off of what you're getting on your training data. You really do need to have some test and validation data to make sure that the model's correctly working. So that's essentially what we've done there. Um, and yeah, I mean, that, that's the model we've, we've tested and it's 87% accurate. So now let's actually have, let's interpret some of these results a little bit better and let's show some reviews. Let's do a prediction on some of the reviews and then see like if this, our model kind of makes sense for what's going on here. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to actually just copy some output that I have here. Um, just to save us a bit of time because I am going to wrap up the video in a minute here, but essentially what this does, it just takes the first uh, review from test data, uh, gets the model to predict that because we obviously we didn't train it on the test status. So we can do that fine. We're going to say review and then we print out the decoded review. We're going to print out what the model predicted and then we're going to print out what the actual label of that was. So if I run this now, I'll fast forward through the kind of training process and we will see the other. All right. So this is what essentially our review looks like. So at least the one that we were testing it on and you can see that we have this little start tag and it says, please give this one a miss for, and then BR stands for like break line or go to the next line. So we could have actually added another tag for BR. Uh, if we noticed that this was used a lot in the review, uh, but we didn't do that. So you see BR, uh, unless this is actually part of the review, but I feel like that should be like break line in terms of HTML anyways. Uh, and then we have some unknown characters, which could be anything that we just didn't know what it was. And it says, and the rest of the cast rendered terrible performances. The show is flat, 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 BR, BR. I don't know how uh, Michael Madison could have allowed this one on his plate. He almost seemed he, what is it? Seemed to know this wasn't going to work out and his performance was quite unknown. So all, yeah. So anyways, you can see that this probably had like some emojis in it or something. And that's why we have all these unknowns. And then obviously we made this review, which was pretty short to be the full length of 250 so we see all these pads that did that for us and then we have a prediction and an actual value of zero so we did end up getting this one correct now i think it'd be interesting actually to write your own review and test it on this so in the next video what i'm going to do is show you how we can save the model to avoid doing like all of this every time we want to run the code because realistically we don't want to wait like a minute or two before we can predict uh, a movie review every time we just want it to happen instantly and we definitely can do that. I just haven't showed that yet in the series because that's kind of in like later what you do after you learn machine learning. Um, and obviously like this, this model trained pretty quickly. Like we only had about, uh, what was it? Like 50,000 test data set, which I, it seems like a large number, but it's really not, especially when you're talking about string data. So in future videos, we're going to be training uh, models that take like maybe a few days to train. Um, at least that's the goal or maybe a few hours or something like that. 
So in that case, you're probably not going to want to train it every time before you predict some information. So that'll be useful to know how to save that. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And in the next video, I will be showing you guys how to save the model and how to make predictions on our own uh, written reviews.